Um, I'm Dr. Khan, so using essential oils to help maintain your health. Um, just because you're here, I'm assuming y'all are interested in gardening. And so, you know, you may, you may plant flowers because you like the beauty of them, because you like the natural smell in your house instead of something toxic. Um, to save money, so you don't have to store a lot of them. You may plant your own vegetable gardens, uh, partly because you love gardening, partly because you want to exercise, you want to know that your stuff doesn't have all the chemicals put on it. You know, you just have all that. You may want to garden because you want to the exercise, or the vitamin D that you get from the sunshine, or, you know, just the fun of it. So I think it's pretty safe to assume that many of y'all are health conscious. And so essential oils do fit into the garden theme of this because essential oils come from plants. Right. Um, so I do have to say a disclaimer, that's just kind of required. We're not here to digest, treat, cure, prevent, um, but we are here to, you know, to teach. <clears throat> Okay, so what are essential oils? Well, essential oils have been here from the beginning. God had to give people something from the beginning. Well, essential oils are that. Okay, in the Bible, indirectly, essential oils are mentioned a thousand times. Directly, they're mentioned about 250 times. So, I mean, they have been here from the get -go. It just seems like we're just kind of learning about them more recently. Essential oils are extracted from Plants, trees, and fruit. They're basically the lifeblood of the plant. It's their immune system. It's what keeps them healthy when they get damaged and, and attacked. And then it works similarly on us. There are different grades of essential oils. Uh, there's the most common is a like perfume grade. And that one is just it's not a healthy grade. Okay? Uh, it's mostly just for the smell, it's not for the therapeutic value. So you're going to have synthetics in that version of it. Another version, another grade of essential oils is food grade. Well, hopefully those are better than the, the aromatic perfume type. But there's a good chance that they're going to have synthetics in them. They may not have been grown from organic soil and all that. Uh, so that too is still not what you're looking for if you're looking for health. The best grade of essential oils are therapeutic grade. Those have the highest optimum level of plant compounds that are there for the health benefits. Uh, and you, what you're wanting to look at in a company when you're looking for these things is a company who really knows their product. They know the seed. They know it's not genetically modified. That's important to gardeners. They know the soil. They know that the soil does not contain contaminants. It doesn't have the pesticides and herbicides and all that kind of icky stuff in them. Um, they farm it themselves. Okay, that's important. It's not grown in, in China by, you know, who knows what kind of regulations. It's, these are cultivated by themselves. They own their own farm, they partner with them heavily. Um, they distill their own oils. Well, let me back up. They cultivate them. Uh, they harvest. It matters between day and night on some of the plants when you want to harvest. And you want a company who really cares about that. Distil distillation of the plant. That's important as well. Because some uh, companies are going to do the fast way. Let's just get the plant material extracted out, the oil extracted out of the plant material. They don't care how fast or how high the temperature. You want a company who is doing it at the right speed, the right temperature to keep the optimum health benefits of the plant. Um, you know, like if you're making a cup of tea with a tea bag, that first cup is the strongest. Some of our, some of the companies out there, not when I represent, but some of the companies out there, they're going to need the second, third, fourth distillations. So if you use that tea bag for another cup of tea and another cup of tea, well, your tea is getting weaker and weaker. Well, that's not going if, if that was the essential oils, you're not going to get as much health benefit out of those weaker and weaker. So you're going to want a company who sells only the, the first distillation oils. And uh, that's third party internally loaded because you want to know that it's really as good as they say it is. It's not just, you know, you, you can have stuff out there labeled pure, but 
there may just be a drop or two that's pure. You want to know that it's tested and it meets those very first standards. And bottling an oil is important. Because that kind of thing, you want them to know that oil from the can to the end. So that's something y'all want to look for when you're putting it in and stuff. Okay. You do not want to go get your oils from like a McDonald's type place. Okay. Walmart, you know, the health food store, if you're not necessarily getting what you want. Essential oil. If you're just going for fragrance, that's what you're getting. If you're going for therapeutic value, you want something much stronger than that. Now, how concentrated are high quality therapeutic oils? Well, if you go to Walmart, you're not going to get that high quality. You're not getting the concentrated oil. Let me give you a, an example a 15 milliliter bottle of oil, which has 250 to 300 drops of oil. For a lemon, it takes 75 lemons to get this. Okay, that's concentrated, and that is all that's in it. It's just a lemon. Now, for the lavender, the side bottle, it's 27 square feet of lavender just to make this. Now, if you're going to Walmart and paying just a few bucks, you can guess it's not 27 square feet of lavender that's going to go with it. And for peppermint, one pound of raw, uh, raw peppermint material makes a bottle. So they're highly concentrated, highly effective. All right. Now another thing, when you're looking for quality of oils, you know how like the weather is going to affect the plants y'all garden? So sometimes your tomatoes may not produce as, as well as your oak. Well, that's the same way with essential oils. The weather's going to affect those plants. So if there's a, a heavy, bad weather season, well, the oils may go out of stock, okay? That tells you right there that you're getting quality oils if they go out of stock occasionally. Because if you're getting them at Walmart, if they run out of stock, that just means they forgot to order them from the warehouse. It's because those are lab-produced. Lab-produced can, you know, produce them as often, as big of a quantity as they want. Whereas we're relying on God to provide, you know, the correct weather at the right times for the products. Um, you can do these in, you can apply oils if they're therapeutic grade in three ways, aromatic, topical, and dietary. Aromatic over here, you see a diffuser. That's one way to get it into the air. Um, it's not your ordinary run-of-the-mill humidifier that you don't get at the store. Okay? This humidifies, it, uh, it, this, oh boy. it uh, just puts out all that therapeutic stuff in the air. It's an atomizer. It's going to just put it in lots of lots of uh, particles, molecules, to get that essential oil out there so that you can breathe it in. Uh, you can also just put a drop of oil in your hand, rub it together, and just inhale. Just sniff it, and you're getting that value. Okay. Topically, you can put it on uh, just on your skin. You can do it neat, which means undiluted. Or you can do it with a, a carrier oil, like a, if you're following coconut oil or olive oil, something like that. Alright, uh, and we also take them dietarily, which means you can put it in your water. I put, in my water, I put lemon oil every day. But you want to make sure it's glass, because if it's a therapeutic grade lemon oil, if you put it in plastic, it's going to leach the toxins out of that plastic, and therefore you're drinking the toxins. So put it in a glass so that it it's good for you that way. You can put them in your empty capsules of oils. I do that all the time. I, I take uh, some every night before I go to bed in a capsule. Uh, you can just drop the oil under your tongue. I mean, you, you didn't therapeutic right any of them uh, up that way. Now, I'm going to give y'all just a brief overview of several oils. But I am limited on what I can say because of the FDA. So it's, it's going to be kind of a little more... Maybe not as helpful as the one you, but we can use a little bit of things. Since this is a gardening event, I'm going to touch lightly on a couple of oils that you're familiar with their plants, and then I'll talk about some other oils. So the first oil I want to talk about is basil. Some of you may plant basil around your house and pet it to repel house flies and mosquitoes and aphids, etc. Well, did you know that the essential oil from basil it has a health benefit? Okay, you can uh, you can diffuse it. It's refreshing. It's 
calming. You can take it dietarily. It's a very good support for your health and wellness. And honestly, you can cook with it. Get, and then you know, because it's uh, therapeutic grade, it doesn't have a toxin, so you're putting something in your food that you don't have to worry about. Now, because they are so highly concentrated, you don't put just a whole lot in to flavor. It really just has a little lot. Of y'all probably plant that around your house to repel mosquitoes. Well, that's essential oil that comes from the lemongrass. It's also very helpful with lemon, uh, with a therapeutic the other, uh, One of the benefits is that it can inspire a sense of clarity and relaxation. The other day, oh, now I was stressed getting ready for this. I was stressed getting ready for a couple of events that are happening at my house with my team this weekend. Uh, my son was home from college. He needed his laundry done. I had stuff at church for everything I volunteered at that I needed to do. I was working. So all of a sudden, I was just kind of like a mess. I decided, you know what, I'm going to diffuse basil and lemongrass. I think my family was really glad that I did. I had a much more relaxed demeanor about me afterwards. Um, lemongrass, you can put it in a sink full of dishes or in your laundry for a fresh smell and clean boost. Uh, it's good for a complement of your post-workout massage. Um, my son, my middle son, who runs for the high school cross-country team and track team, Sometimes he'll massage his legs after running. <coughs> it's a really good workout well, for that. You can put it in a diffuser. You can make a, your own air freshener with it. But it's also dietary. So lemongrass is not only a topical and aromatic with dietary. It's really good for your overall well-being. It may help support your digestive system. It helps normal overall cardiovascular health and function. Uh, you can take it in a capsule, you can flavor your food, it, it goes really well with Asian dishes specifically, but you can use it in all sorts of things. Okay, the next oil is, it's one that's very popular with essential oil users, this is peppermint. Now y'all may pe plant peppermint around your yard, in your garden, to repel mosquitoes and aphids. Well, the essential oil has health benefits. So aromatically and topical, if you're dragging around at work, you know, you had a long day, or just wherever you're at, and you just, you just need a little boost, just smell some peppermint. It gives you such a nice boost. Uh, you can rub on your abdomen to soothe the minor stomach discomfort. You can uh, put it on the back of your neck for a nice cooling sensation. One of my uh, team members goes to the golf course to watch her son play golf. She gets really hot. She loves that cooling sensation when she puts it on the back of her neck. You can use it. It's a great one for post-workout massage. It helps with some of those little tired muscles and just minor aches and pains that you have with it. Uh, my daughter, when she comes in from outside, likes to rub it on her skin early evening time. And then if you are diffusing it, it just kind of inspires you and gives you just a good boost of positivity and helps you focus. Now, obviously, the, uh, you can do it bacterially as well. Um, it is really good for uh, healthy intestinal function, uh, to promote it, to promote healthy bowel function, healthy gut function. It just maintains the efficiency of the digestive system. Uh, I love to take it in a capsule. And I, I pair it with another oil we're going to talk about in a little while, which is digest. If I'm going to an unfamiliar restaurant, I want that digestive support, so I'm putting peppermint and digest in a capsule. Take that way. Drop under your tongue. You can, uh, athletes like to put it in the water, it's, it's good just for their athletic performance. Uh, we can all benefit from that. Moths, etc. 
well the essential oils have benefits as well. All right, so you can diffuse it for a very comforting, calming sense. It's just one of those things that you just, you're just going to relax and relax. You're just, you know, pure stuff. Um, it invites you to fully enjoy the outdoors. It can aid your natural response to skin irritation. Um, you may want to rub it on the back of your neck and, or massage yourself or have a bath with lavender just for a nice relaxing and calming into the day. Uh, you can rub it on the bottom of your feet like before you go to bed and help have a nice relaxing and restful sleep. You can spritz it on your pillow, have a little glass water bottle and spritz it on that. It's just inhaling it. It's just that calming sense that you um, I like to take uh, lavender dietarily. Oh, well, I'm going to skip a couple things. You can put it in your shampoo and uh, give your healthy, your hair just kind of a healthy boost. You can uh, put it in uh, skincare products because it's really good for skin uh, issues. Uh, dietarily, I like to put it in a capsule. I like to pair it with peppermint and lemon because it's just really good respiratory support that way. I take that. I've seen uh, pictures of a refreshing lemonade that I have not made yet, but it's, it looks so good. And it's with lavender in it. It's this nice purple hue to it. And I'm not picked with it, but it also goes well with um, sweet jams and that kind of thing, fruity type jams. Uh, some people do it though with savory dishes that have rosemary and that kind of thing. I have yet to cook with lavender, but I really want to when I get around to it. Okay, lemon. And obviously this is probably not one you're going to have in your yard, but it's something that is very popular. I just love the smell of lemon. I don't know about you, but if I'm smelling it, I just feel uplifted. I just have a more happy, focused sense about me. Um, and since it has a clean scent, it kind of makes me want to clean, which means I should probably be diffusing it a little more often inside of my house a little more often. <laughs> But you can boost your cleaning products by putting lavender in your naturally derived cleaning products. Um, I'm talking about lemon, I'm talking about lemon, I'm sorry, because of lavender. Um, it can help remove sticky glue and stuff like that off of the items. Um, your teenagers can put it in their, their skincare products to help with those blemishes. Now, it is a photosensitive oil, so you don't want to just go out and suck after having it on. On your skin directly. Uh, you can put it on the bottom of your feet for a smoother foot appearance, so you can feel those and stuff. <coughs> All right. Now, dietarily, you can put it in your water. Like I said, I put, I put it in my water every day. Um, you can put it in a capsule. It's just very good overall health benefit. It aids in, a, it aids in digestive support, respiratory support immune support. It's just a very good overall healthy oil. Okay, frankincense. I think most of us, when we hear about frankincense, we think of baby Jesus. And when I think of frankincense, I just kind of think of that ritualistic kind of scent burning stuff that they did in the Bible. And that's all I thought frankincense was. Lo and behold, it's got health benefits. <laughs> Who knew? So, it's one that you can diffuse for meditation during prayer time or just meditating, or even during yoga, just to have that grounding and purpose about you. Um, it helps support your mood by uplifting positive energy in times of restlessness and unease. It can help you with a good uh, sense of the sleep. You know, lavender is good for sleep. It can also kind of help with stuff like that. Um, you can, uh, it helps with healthy looking skin. It helps smooth the healthy looking skin. You can put it in your moisturizer. You can put lavender with it, and both of those are good oils for your skin. Uh, you can massage with it, you know, after your activity. And it's also a, a dietary oil. It supports your well-being. It supports normal cellular health. You can say that word very well. It promotes healthy respiratory function. It's a very good immune support oil. Lavender, I'm sorry, frankincense is one of those all-around oils. So, 
God knew what he was doing when one of the three gifts were made Jesus was pregnant since. All right, now I would like to talk about some blended oils. So they're going to have more than one oil in them. And just like out your flower garden, you might pick various types of flowers to make a pretty bouquet. Or you might pick various vegetables out of your garden to make a top salad. So you're making nice things with different things. We're going to do the same with these blended oils. Okay? So one of the oils I want to talk about is digest. Now, some of these are, I would have talked about, some of these are just ones you're familiar with, just the name at least. Patchouli, tarragon, ginger, peppermint, juniper, fennel, lemongrass. Is it anise or anise? Anyways. Anise, okay. So that all, it comprises this one blend. Now, it can be uh, aromatic or topical. It can be diffused. You can rub it on your abdomen for minor stomach discomfort. You can do it as a dietary supplement. Uh, you can put it in a gel capsule. It's a great one to take when traveling. Again, that's one of those oils I was telling you I pair with peppermint and take in a capsule for digestive support. My daughter keeps this for topical use on her bedside table because she needs that digestive support. Uh, another blended oil I'd like to briefly talk about is Panaway. It's got wintergreen, clove, helichrysum, and peppermint in it. It has a very stimulating aroma. I believe I, we applied it to you, Richard, is that right? It, it supports the appearance of healthy looking skin. So if you're out in your garden and you bump into your wheelbarrow full of mulch, you might want to put some pan away for that healthy looking skin. Um, it's, if you've been sitting all day, you know how your back just kind of gets achy and tired, rub some peppermint on it. It's really good for that kind of thing. Athletes like to keep it in their gym bags with them because it's one of those good massage oils rubbed in your knees or back or whatever after you exercise. So it helps with minor aches and discomforts. The gardeners might find it helpful after you've been bending over, pulling weeds, or digging in the dirt. You might feel good on those hands or your knees, you know, after doing all that, your back. Another blend I'd like to tell you a little bit about is purification. And y'all probably heard of citronella, rosemary, tea tree, lemongrass, lavender, and myrtle. Those comprise this blend. And this blend is a great one for uh, freshening the air, eliminating odors. Cigarette smell happens to not agree with me. And at work one day, there was this guy that came in. It's not like he had just smoked a lot, you know, so you know how to kind of things fall in. And I'm like, oh no. Well, his phone rang, luckily. He left for just a second. I get a paper towel out. I grab my purification. I dab a few drops on it. I start waving around my office like a little crazy lady, just going like this. And then he was going to meet with my co-worker in her office, so I, and she also has trouble with the smell of the cigarette. So I just lay the, pe the paper towel on her bookshelf. But he comes back in, and again, we both react quickly to the smell. So he had, goes into her office and stays for 30 minutes. We can never tell you that. Ready for, for that. Um, you know, if you brought some onions in from your garden and you're cutting them up, and your kitchen just starts to smell, we can diffuse the purification and get rid of that. Cotton balls, put them on your vents. Because if you don't have a diffuser, you want to still get it in the air. That'll lift it up in the air a little bit. Um, it's a good way to think of your own air freshener in a bathroom. Instead of going by the toxic stuff, you can just make your own. Um, the sun that I told you runs, well, in the heat of the summer, <coughs> the shoes can really smell the wind. I mean, he runs miles. <laughs> so here's what we like to do. We'll put some purification on a uh, cotton ball, stick it inside of the shoe, and it helps tremendously. I'm talking about a teenage sweaty foot. You know, it helps tremendously. Mm -hmm. um, so these are the ways that I'm showing you that these oils are helping you remove some of the toxic products out of your households. Uh, it's also good for
for um, improving the appearance of healthy looking skin, you can put it in with the moisturizers. You can uh, put it. Uh, you can put it on you before you're going outdoors to enjoy it to annoyance free and compliantly here. All right, these. Oh, I love this blend. This is a blend that every household should have. It's comprised of lemon, clove, rosemary, eucalyptus radiata, and cinnamon bar. You know, most of these blends are made of products that y'all have heard of and may have in herb garden, that kind of thing. Thieves, it's an odd name. It comes from the 15th century when these grave robbers were robbing the dying and the dead. And they had uh, some of these botanicals in their, whatever, the thing that they made to, to keep, uh, for, you know, keep their immune system uh, built up. So when they were caught, they were asked what to do and for less than your sentence. So that's how this name came about. These has great cleaning power. There's, I mean, with the company I represent, there's just a whole myriad of products with the thieves in it, and it's, it's wonderful. It can refresh a musty carpet. You can pair it with some baking soda and sprinkle it on the carpet if you really want mustiness. It's got a nice fall scent. At our table in the vinegar area, that's what we're just using so you can smell it really well. Here, I've got citrus fresh. It's one of these that you can apply to the bottom of your feet. It supports your healthy immune system. My oldest son is a freshman at college, and I sent various oils with him and diffuser. These was one of the oils I wanted him to have. If you're in college, you're staying up late, you're studying, you're just around a bunch of people. You need that immune support. And that gave me uh, some peace of mind knowing he had what he needed to keep with him at college. His girlfriend will call him up sometimes and say, Hey, I need to borrow so and so oil because she's learning about these oils as well. So it's really, really good for your immune function. Uh, it includes people like this radiata, which may help your healthy respiratory system. It just contributes to overall wellness. You can uh, add it to I've added it to oatmeal. It's pretty good that way. It's going to have a cinnamon taste to it. Um, let's see. Just keeping up with, you know, if you're on such a busy schedule, it's hard to keep that immune system going. It just helps boost that, keeps it um, Because you dietarily, you can do it that way. You can put it in your foods, you can put it in your capsule. But I keep some of these oils in my purse at all times. So I'm kind of just putting it in. Occasionally, I'll put it on my toothpaste and brush my teeth with it, and it just kind of gives my mouth that nice, clean feeling, but I'm also supporting my gums with it. You can use essential oils to take away some of those toxins out of your home, replacing healthy products with some of those toxic products. All right. Uh, air fresheners are some of the most common types of synthetic toxins that are in your house. Air fresheners, plug-in deodorizers, scented cam chemicals, these are all known to cause, you know, pretty big health uh, issues. Well, why? Why do that? We've got essential oils that can help replace that. Let's see. I'll also if our mirrors get this way. Um, one of the ways that you can replace it is by diffusing. Like I said, the diffuser, you can diffuse the purification to get rid of those nasty odors instead of spraying those toxic things. Um, and it puts it out into the air, and so you're smelling it all over. It's just a great alternative to the candles and all that. Um, now, another way of replacing the uh, the sprays of candles and stuff is to make a room spray. So, we're going to have a little interactive demonstration. All of you have a number, and since the, this isn't full, we'll see how many times I have to draw a, name, a number before somebody has it. Okay. Does anybody have number eight? Well, somebody missed out. Alright. How many numbers will be together? 31? 
<laughs> this is gonna get comical. <laughs> Fifteen.
three most common types of toxins in your household cleaners are causing stuff from anywhere from sore throats to pulmonary edema to liver or kidney damage to asthma, bronchitis, uh, skin irritations, hormone disruptors. Why do that? We've got healthy alternatives. Now, you can actually use the oils themselves for cleaning. So you can, uh, for your sinks and bathrooms, you could use some baking soda, rosemary oil, eucalyptus oil, lemon or tea tree oils, vinegar and hot water. And you can use that combination to clean. You can use vinegar and lemon. You can, for uh, furniture polish, you can do water, olive oil, vinegar, and lemon, pine, or rosemary essential oils. Or, uh, you know, basically the same thing, all-purpose cleaner, lemon juice, lemon oil, or thieves. But you know what? I take the lazy way out. We have the thieves cleaner, which mm -hmm. at our bigger table we have some. I didn't bring it in here. It's very concentrated. I get in a glass bottle, put two capsules of that thing, and throw the rest of it up in water. I'm done. My, that's my cleaning that we, our products that we do. Well. And you use that on everything? I do. I use it on everything too. I've been doing it 15 years. My furniture looks great. And I mean, if you get two to three gallons of cleaner out of one bottle, mm -hmm. your wholesale cost, you a wholesale member like us, is about $22 in this room. Two uh, size bottle is very mm -hmm. concentrated. Yeah. Amazing. It's more glass, yeah. shower, toilet, anything. To You're not forward. worrying about your animals being around it, your grandkids, your kids, yourself, just any of that. Okay, another way we can replace things are the carpet fresheners. Okay, so they're toxic. Uh, I'm having technical difficulties with my drawings, so if y'all want to give me numbers, you have a number on you have? Okay. All right, so we're going to make the carpet freshener, and I'm just kind of mixing it up. I'll show you how easy. Jesus, I saw one another one. She forgot. <laughs> <laughs> she talked. Okay, number twenty-nine. That's me. All right. <laughs> okay, now so we're going to show you a quick, a simple way to make a carpet freshener. First, we're going to tie the It's only going to take 
take two to four drops of oil. Go ahead and you want to put four, that's fine. And this is Epsom salt. Push your plate together or something? How do you want to do that? 